Ever since India banned TikTok, there has been a revived focus on the alternative internet companies. Already we know about Chingari, Reposo, ShareChat, and lots more. Rizal is also a new short video sharing platform, but it's slightly different from the rest. Today I'm joined by Lakshminath, who is co-founder of Rizal, to understand what more can be explored in this space. Welcome, welcome to HT Tech. Thank you, thank you, uh, Kul. Um, I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to be talking about this particular topic. <clears throat> so um, Rizal uh, has been, you know, as a company, um, you know, Silver Labs India Private Limited uh, in India and Silver Labs Technologies Inc., uh, which is our parent company. We've been exploring video as a space uh, for a long time, right? We've done uh, Ask Me Anything type of video platforms and other things in the past. Um, from that experience, we started this platform um, last year. So therefore, um, our our uh, existence was uh, you know coexistence with uh, TikTok and a number of other apps, and we've tracked uh, these apps' success and what they have done and what they haven't done and so on. And we found a specific area where there is a gap. So the way we started out was we thought that anyone and everyone can create short videos and express uh, their opinions uh, easily if we provided them a text prompt. So this is where we first started out. Right. So um, our system will curate and over time we found that users also will curate topics of interest and so on and they would create up to 60 second videos. And what we also did is we analyzed a number of other social platforms like Twitter, Reddit and other things. And we noticed that there may be uh, some kind of um, negative vibe that develops when you are able to type uh, comments and text. So we innovated and we came up with video responses. Now this resulted in a community forming very quickly. And this resulted in a lot of people having a back and forth dialogue using video only um, as a means for communication. So we started out uh, all this in, in the US and we were able to transfer this uh, to India uh, with some level of marketing in about February of this year. <laughs> Now, this oh. all, of course, happened before um, TikTok went away. And, and that's the point that I would like to make. Uh, and yeah. Uh, can you tell us about like uh, how uh, have you ever seen, uh, how did you, uh, what was the traction, uh, the change in the traction with the ban on TikTok? And then suddenly there was a lot of, no, there were a lot of uh, users uh, looking for an appropriate alternative. Uh, did your platform also see such a growth in a short time? So um, this is a very interesting area and a tough area to actually explore. So I'll talk about this uh, uh, briefly without getting into certain um, aspects that I would like to avoid and, and we'll see how it goes. So uh, number one is the way we built our platform, it's a pure UGC platform, right? Users basically come in and they come up, uh, review our uh, text-based prompts and they may then talk about um, uh, you know, what their thoughts are and exchange ideas. So this is a simple model. Now, if you try to do what TikTok tried to do, especially in the music area, um, it comes together as some kind of a composition where there is a track. Now you have to worry about who's the owner of that track and how many people are the owners of this track. So it, it cannot be something that you can simply overnight do it. Right. So there are a number of um, uh, aspects that are already playing out in the market, as you know, which I don't want to um, quite comment on directly. But what we are trying to do is we when we noticed that there is a gap because TikTok went away and this notion of track based recording also needs to happen. Um, we said, OK, how do we do this right? So we went and signed up with one uh, entity called Soundstripe in the US and we got their music. Um, so it was vetted through lawyers and everything else. And we got that uh, integrated in our platform. And we are now discussing with um, other people to see how to bring um, some Indian content tracks into, into our platform. So that work is going on. Now, in terms of what happened with respect to growth and other things when COVID hit and when um, TikTok went away, um, it's really a, a kind of a two or three ways you can dice it and say, um, what is the impact? So one of, it, one of that is um, a number of what I would call ordinary creators as of three, four years ago have become extraordinary creators because of how 
the TikTok community has been built up and so on. And it's not just them, it's a number of other players as well. We, you know, in our own platform, there is uh, R series and R360. These are two programs that we, we try to run. The, the R series program is about vertical series based content and 360 is about shows. Now, what happened in this is that creators who may have started out with, you know, ordinary skills where, whereas just as you and me who may be making videos over time because of the way they competed with each other, um, tried to do better than they have done in the previous uh, uh, series and so on, they were able to build very engaging content themselves, right? Now this will take time. You have to nurture uh, this type of talent and over time they become very good. So in this area, what is happening is that um, the viewers, which is the second part of this equation, um, they have been looking at video as a platform, of course, is going to be successful, right? It is an equalizer. It doesn't rely on education, right? Uh, literacy is no longer a huge issue, right? You don't have to read some complex prose written by um, an expert. You can simply listen to each other and express your thoughts uh, with each other in simple language. So viewers look for different types of content based on context. So for example, they may be looking at content. We look at it as per minute production cost. Right? If you're looking at a Marvel movie, you're looking at per minute, maybe millions of dollars. Whereas you may, you may be looking at a vertical series that a regular user creates, you're looking at minimal cost, you know, almost you know, just, the, just the person's uh, creativity and time. Right? So viewers would like to explore all kinds of content uh, from top to bottom. Right? As you have seen, there is content that you can explore in Netflix and, uh, and Amazon Prime and so on. And this tends to be 16 by nine which is like a horizontal platform, uh, horizontal uh, aspect ratio, which is what YouTube also has made uh, popular, right? And then of course there is us, right? And the, on the other extreme, if you look at content like Snapchat and even Facebook and Instagram, you can upload anything and everything. It's a low uh, unit action cost, right? You, you have a photo that you have taken, you may apply a filter and you upload. Whereas if you have to put together a performance for 10 seconds that you can hold somebody else's attention, um, the effort uh, increases a little bit, right? Okay. So this may improve uh, based on, uh, you know, uh, whether you're developing talent and, and, and so on. So, so that is how we, we diced this area and we said, what is it that we can provide to creators? What is it that we can provide to viewers? And we can talk more uh, as you get through more of your uh, ideas and questions. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, using uh, uh, cutting edge technologies like AI, ML, and uh, uh, so can you tell us like uh, uh, what are the technologies that are under the hood of Fizzle, you know, how does the algorithm work? Is there some sort of anything new that we should know about so this something you are experimenting with? There is a lot that goes into it, uh, of course, right? And we can get into some of those technologies and we can get into more in future conversations. So Absolutely. let's consider client side as well as server side, right? Client side, what you're trying to look at is whether you can provide some kind of a creation magic for creators, right? What type of features can you provide? And these features can be very simple uh, things and they can be very complex things, right? So the simplest form of uh, a technology that uh, you can provide is um, segment-based recording where people can record in segments and review the way that they have done it and, and then um, tag it and, and, and submit it. Now you can do a number of video level uh, filters. You can provide an opportunity to add a lot of supplemental materials. We call it B-roll. We've introduced that. And this allows people to bring in content that they may have created elsewhere. Like for example, they've gone for like uh, a travel thing or they went to a restaurant. So they can talk about their journey by talking about their overall journey in words and then introduce videos in the middle. And this uh, makes for a rich content. So this is on the uh, content side and, and over here, uh, sorry, on the client side. And over here, there are a number of things that you can do in terms of figuring out how to provide the right type of materials based on context, right? And then when you go to the server side, this is where the magic comes from. In fact, if you think about the simplest model, uh, where if you are a movie theater, you're looking for what are the 10 movies that are releasing, 20 movies that are releasing, and then you make a determination on what gets most number of seats sold. And so you're going to go acquire that content and then you play it. And once you've done it, you're done. Meaning that for the next week or so, that's your programming. You have to live with it, 
because you already paid for it, right? Whereas in a system like ours, uh, we can uh, put up a piece of content from let's say I am speaking and we can see what is the level of uh, uh, viewing that is going on on this, right? How many people watched for one second, two seconds and so on all the way up to the end of the video and of course, looping the video and watching again and again. So this is where algorithms come in where the algorithm starts figuring out how many more people do I need to serve this content? And can I figure out whether this particular person is interested in a language associated with this video, the person associated with, with this video, the nature of this video, whether a B-roll is included or not and, and, and so on, right? Keeping all these things in mind, we're able to serve the content. There is an abundance of content if you think about it. Even if you have a thousand creators a day, and if they're creating two or three videos a day even, you have 20,000 videos of 60, 60 seconds. So you have 20,000 minutes of content, right? Now you have to think about um, how many minutes will a user stay in your app? Let's assume that it is in the range of 30 to 60 uh, minutes, right? This is the industry highest and, and things like that. So now you have a lot of content and there is only a little bit of time. So what is the content that you provide to the user and how quickly can your algorithm learn? And this is where we are doing a lot of innovation. This is where TikTok has had a lot of success. And this problem becomes more and more complex as you have more and more content coming in, right? So this uh, is where I think we will excel. Yeah. Okay. You uh, made a very interesting point that uh, you have to think about the content, music, music's license and other issues, right? Uh, don't you think that after uh, the ban on TikTok and uh, there are a lot of in Indian companies that are rising, but they have they are very similar to each other. They're not very uh, different. They don't uh, the concept wise they're very much similar and uh, this is where uh, this is what i wanted to ask that uh, what uh, new can be done in the vertical video format maybe pioneered by tiktok at one point so there is a lot that can be done in fact we are already doing a couple of these things and we've in fact started out in an area where we are complementary to tiktok's content in the first place mm -hmm. right especially in india tiktok has been very successful in two to three areas number one is uh, the what we call song and dance it's really lip sync to um, a, a song that may be going on in the background uh, two is uh, funny skips that you can do either with uh, sound effects or um, with uh, some dialogue, right, uh, that, that you can do. And finally, of course, uh, uh, you know, a, a mix of stuff that people can come in, which you can put it into miscellaneous uh, model. So now um, what we said was there is a lot more that you can do. One, of course, we have done the talking videos. And then we've said that consider how there are talk shows in the real world whether regular people can create talk shows uh, for their audience. Can they build an audience for themselves and so on. So we've done that uh, with the 360 program. And finally, we said, is there a way for everyday person to be able to create series based content? And we've been able to do that as well. Like there are a variety of topics that are going on, especially in TikTok US right now. And um, many of those topics will come to India. They are already coming to uh, our platform and we are uh, currently working on nurturing all that, right? So the diversity of content in this area is going to be amazing. There is a class of videos that, um, you know, there are other platforms that try to uh, produce where the face is not there, like cooking videos, travel videos and things like that. But this is not content that, you know, is it's, it's engaging in some level, but it doesn't build a community right? Because it's something that you would consume or, uh, in a passing way or whatnot. And, and, and that's not something that we would uh, hardcore chase. And there may be mm -hmm. people who will chase that. There are, I think, one or two platforms in India and at least one or two in the US that try to chase this area. But we are not mm -hmm. into that area, right? We were trying to see how to get people connected and build communities mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the problems that uh, TikTok also faced and uh, a lot of user generated uh, video platforms also face is the problem of content moderation. The kind of content that is out there that might be objectionable, that might uh, have fake news, that might have a propaganda or some sort of, you know, there are, uh, because it's just the user that is generating the content and of late, uh, we have seen this uh, problem with uh, a lot uh, with, uh, with TikTok, which also got banned before the big ban happened. Uh, there was a small ban because of the content, the kind of content that it was hosting. 
so what is your take on such challenges you know you can't uh, uh, how do you build that kind of content moderation how much ai can fix it and how much of human intervention is required and then again it's again it's a mass uh, it's, just, it's just a lot of work right 100% so this is an excellent question of course uh, kulbhushan thanks for asking so in uh, in this area there are of course uh, ai based solutions we have an ai pipeline um videos that we get we run through um uh, detection of uh, objectionable content especially nudity um and things like that and uh, uh, this is detected and flagged and it goes to manual moderation at that point where people can see whether it has been detected as nude so as it happens ai in this area where is very good it could also have some uh wrong uh, guesses so for example if i show um, you know my hands and my head it's all skin right and it can be seen as a video that may have too much nudity or something like that they usually rank it and say that you know there is this much percentage of nudity and so uh, there is a human then will look at it and say yes this is a bad content and this is not a what not so that is one end of the spectrum the other end of the spectrum is speech itself right now mm-hmm. if you look at a variety of platforms out there um how far do you go in in terms of moderating speech itself right who is the arbiter of what is being told whether it is true okay. false and things like that and that can be a very dangerous area to tread on because mm-hmm. uh, one man's uh, fake news is another man's uh, truth right i mean you know uh, because there are always going to be multiple opinions so what we uh, try to do uh, definitely is uh we try to rely on the community policing itself like where people can mm-hmm. report if there is a certain piece of content that is inappropriate or uh wrong or fake or um attacking somebody whether it is a person or a group and so on and that all comes back to us and we will uh, manually moderate and and make a call on that we also have a policy of creating content on our platform and not freely mm-hmm. uploading content so rizil mm-hmm. is a, an original content platform which means that if you are a new user who got on the platform you will actually be forced to create um now this will result in you uh, yourself getting on um a video and putting your face out there so there is a face to the account and this uh, increases accountability and people tend to not make mistakes when when we so we do experiment of course we do ab testing all the time Uh, as with any platform uh, in this nature mm-hmm. when you allow upload freely you do get some really bad content in the sense that people will upload whatever they feel like because nobody is uh, watching or whatever of course for us that mm-hmm. increases uh, work in terms of much of that content goes to manual con- uh, uh, moderation mm-hmm. because ai will flag everything saying that mm-hmm. some people uploaded 16 by 9 do we really want to allow this because we are a vertical platform we don't want to allow 16 by 9 similarly um, you know ai thinks that there is nudity in this content so let's mm-hmm. check it out there may be violence in this content let's check it out so mm-hmm. then humans have to go and our moderation team is very large uh, we are all based in hyderabad um, so uh, our team goes through Uh, reviews and then flags content and then sometimes it goes through multiple rounds to make sure that uh, things are all fine or not and we have a policy of three strikes and you're out um mm-hmm. and uh, you know there are some cases where if you egregiously uploaded pornographic content you're out on day one right the first time, first thing we see from you we see that you have intentionally uploaded a pornographic content you're out right we're not willing to give you any chances because that is not content that uh needs to be seen anywhere in india or anything like that and other things uh when there is borderline moderators will review and we will give a warning to the user that this content is not acceptable and you know mm-hmm. there may be a second chance and then you're out mm-hmm. right so this model uh keeps users in a in check mm-hmm. where once they realize what type of a platform it is they tend to be very uh studious about it it's almost like how we behave in front of our parents and elders we don't say bad things in front of them right so if there is a watchful eye including the ai then uh, mm-hmm. users tend to realize that look we are doing this for a meaningful purpose not for you know some uh, fun and giggles okay uh, this will be my last question to you, uh, you. also uh, uh, can you tell me like what is uh, new you are working on what next we can see and uh, will it be entertaining at the same time informative and actually the kind of qualitative stuff which we have been looking out for a very long time absolutely absolutely this is a great question of course thank you um so 
uh, what we are trying to do is we're trying to bring some uh, techniques on the client side where, where we mm -hmm. are, um, you know, providing. So we already have a, a, a feature called talk about a picture where people can put up a photo and talk about what is going on in the world. We are trying to enhance that into a very generalized model where you can have a mix and match of video as well as pictures and things like that. Some of these features we've already implemented on our iPhone version where we have front and back camera at the same time. So where people can talk about the environment they're in and things like this. We've also implemented a green screen in beta, which allows amazing type of content creation where you can put up stuff in the background. Uh, and, and our implementation is already slightly better than Zoom's implementation. Uh, and, and Zoom is the disadvantage because they tend to use uh, the laptop camera, which is not as powerful as your smartphone camera, as you know. Uh, so it's not, I'm not saying Zoom team is excellent, of course, uh, right? So uh, technology also is limiting depending on where it is available. So we're trying to bring that technology and polish it. These things take time, right? We have exceptional engineers and we're polishing this, uh, this feature. On Android also, we're, so there, there's a lot of demand on Android that when, I'm, when are we going to get this great feature uh, of, of uh, green screen? Um, I think at this point in India, we are the only platform that has green screen other than Reels, of course, right? Instagram is, of course, is an exceptional uh, team, as we all know. Um, so we are bringing in uh, a few additional features that I don't want to talk about right now, but I'm willing to talk about them in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time to talk to us. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you for the uh, question. I wish you the best. Same. Thank you. Bye-bye.